Jackson Black kids you know I mean? and for real. And uh, and East Shore of Maryland and the Delmarva Peninsula, etc. Everybody thinks in that the Pont Company is the biggest thing in Delaware. The biggest thing in Delaware are chickens. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's the single biggest four hundred million dollars industry. But my point is that um, I got involved because when I first got it, when I got out of law school and I went to law school, I had to get some financial help to get there. And I got to law school when I got back, I got a job with a fancy firm, the, the biggest, oldest firm in the state. And, and it was called Prickett Ward Burton Sanders. And, uh, and I got the job. But unfortunately, in my state, show how old I am. When, when Wilmington, Delaware is the only city in America occupied by the National Guard since the Civil War because when Dr. King, who was one of my heroes, when he got assassinated, we had riots in Delaware. And so the Southern governor, he was a Democrat, but he was a Southerner in terms of his attitudes. And he, uh, he put the National Guard in the street for 10 months on every corner with drawn bayonets. Only city in America ever occupied since the Civil War. And I quit this fancy law firm and became a public defender because I wanted to be. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, I, in a year, I, 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 so I ran as a, they came to me and said they wanted me to run, <coughs> the local people run as a, for the state senate, as a state senator. <coughs> and I said, I can't do that because <coughs> I'm just, I'm, working part-time as a public defender and part-time as a law practice. I can't go to Dover um, because I wouldn't be able to make a living. And so then they came back to me three days later and said, I want to run for county council. I said, county I can't do that. And they walked over the window of my office and said, right over there, that's the courthouse. It meets there twice a week. You can make it. <laughs> <laughs> so I checked this true story. So I checked it out, and no one had ever won the district they wanted me to run in. So I figured, what the hell? do it, because I won't win. <laughs> but, well, I'll make the effort to go and go No, I, I didn't think it would, because I thought we'd, you know, begin to build. I kept arguing more people should get engaged and run to change the nature of the Democratic Party. Right. So what happened was, I made a mistake. My best friend in the world, my sister, that's okay, man managed my campaign. My sister is three years younger, used to be three years younger than me, now she's 23 years younger. <laughs> By the way, there is no man in the Biden household that's any younger than any woman in the house. That's, that's the family room, you think I'm kidding. Anyway, she managed my campaign and I won. And I won a four year term and I didn't want to go uh, initially, seriously. And, uh, but it uh, turns out that the decennial Senate, every 10 years, is a new, uh, you know, they redo the districts. And so I got reapportioned from a four year term to a two year term. Because mm -hmm. Republicans saw something of me I didn't see that they thought I was going to run for higher office. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, it's, it's God's truth. I'm 28 years old now. <laughs> so I'm going around the state trying to get people to run. There's a group of senior members of the Democratic Party, the only ones who are mainstream Democrats, we are. were, that's right, <laughs> came to me and said one day I was, went to the Democratic Convention down in Dover, Delaware, the off-year convention, and uh, I, uh, I was trying to get other people to run for office. For, I, I joined a small group of the Democratic Coalition to get mainstream pro-choice, pro-liberal, pro-black, pro-typical uh, Northeast Democrat. And, uh, and so I went down to the convention with three of the guys that I had come down with. One had a radio talk show, and then Bob Cunningham, and a few others, anyway. And so after the afternoon session, I went back to the motel. You know, one of these motels you drive up. There's no building in Dover, larger, more than four stories, at least in those days. Not a joke. And so I, I go in and I, I decide I'm going to take a shower and shave to go back that night. So I'm in one of those nine, eight by ten showers, you know, um, restrooms in the motel, and uh, with a shower, with a toilet, with a bath, and a, a shower, and a sink. And I have a towel around me and a shaving cream, and I'm shaving. I hear bam, bam, bam on my 
on, on the door of the hotel room. I mean, the motel room. So I figured it's the guys that came down with, you know, give me trouble. I said, I'll come in. I opened, opened the door. I have a razor in my hand, shaving cream, and a towel around me. There's four senior Democrats standing there. <laughs> the former Chief Justice of the state of Delaware, who had more people in his family as a U.S. Senator when I used to vote for the legislature than any family in American history. And then I should say in, in Delaware history. The state chairman and the congressman who was a good guy who had lost three terms ago because he was too progressive. And a guy named Edward M. Carville, big guy, talk at you like he is, former governor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to, am I boring you here? No. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed as hell. I'm standing with a towel around me in a hotel room that has the headboards nailed on the wall, you know the kind of thing. It was clean, but and two twin beds, two, two, two beds, and a desk nailed on the wall. And I'm, so I said, Come in, gentlemen. Give, uh, give me a minute. And I ran in the bathroom thinking I could change. Well, there was nothing to change in there. So I wiped off the sh all the shaving cream and I walked out and I'm sitting there. And I leaned against that desk. I'll never forget it. I'm looking for these, and to me, two of whom I never met, knew of, never met in my life. And they said, and the Chief Justice, we just came from dinner, Joe. And then the governor said, hey, Joe. We think you should run for the Senate. I said, what? <laughs> I swear to God, true story. <laughs> and they had asked me to go and try to recruit people to run for the Senate. That's what it and, and I said, I'm, I, I'm, I'm too young. I'm only 29. And the Chief Justice said, Joe, you obviously didn't do very well in constitutional law. <laughs> Absolutely true. And I said, I said, you have to be 30 to be sworn in, but you can be elected early. You just got to wait. And he said, you're going to have to wait 17 days to be eligible. And so I thought, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. <clears throat> so I said, thank you, Jim. They left. I went back and rode home with the group that I went down with, the three guys I went down with. But what I did before that, on the way up, I called my, I had a political philosophy professor. You all have one professor and one high school teacher you really respect. And his name was David Ingersoll. And I called him ahead of time. I said, can I stop and see you? Because Dover, Delaware is below Newark, Delaware, and below where my home was near Wilmington. And so I stopped and I said, I told him what happened. He said, what do you think? He said, what do I say? He said, Joe, remember what Plato said. I go, what the hell did Plato say? <laughs> <coughs> no, I'm serious. True story. He said, Plato said, the penalty, to paraphrase Plato, the penalty good people pay for not being involved in politics is being governed by people worse than themselves. You should run. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, so I went home and talked to her with my wife. She said, look, Joe, you're working 40 hours a week trying to get this law firm going, and you're a public defender. And at the same time, you're doing 20 hours to 30 hours a week as a county councilman. Either get in or get out. But there were a whole lot of things I was worried about back then. I didn't support the Vietnam War. A lot of things going on. And uh, so I ran, but I made a mistake of asking my sister to manage my campaign. <laughs> Nixon got 59.8% of the vote in Delaware, almost 60%. And I won by 3,100 votes. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> I only got elected because I got, I, when I run in Delaware, not a joke, I get. 90% of the African American vote in off years and, and this because you're the most loyal constituency because I've been loyal to my constituency. And so, and things are changing. Guess what? Now Delaware is blue, blue, blue. Well, you got a kid, now I'm not. They are as blue as you can get. And with a little bit of luck, and you all making sure that. We change things here in Wisconsin as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got some senators I'd like to see change too. Yeah. 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 And, we do, we're gonna make some, and look, I was going to hush up as my grandfather would say, <laughs> hush up. But one of the uh, one of the things that uh, I think you know, and I'll be 
very serious for just one second and stop and talk, answer any questions you have or just walk around and meet each one individually. You know, uh, I really think democracy is at stake here. Absolutely. Not, not, not a joke. When I, when I uh, um, ran the first time, I made a speech at Independence Hall on democracy. And the press, and they're all smart as hell, the press back here wondered why I was talking about democracy back then in 2020. <laughs> and 60% uh, and of our polling show people were worried about it, whether it was the state. And we ended up winning. But one thing I want you to be aware of, aware of, aware of Trump means what he says. Yes, he does. He means what he says. And he says he's going to get rid of all the stuff that we've done. Which is making sure that people don't have to pay 400 bucks a month for insulin for big diabetes instead of $35 a month. Make sure, I just go down the whole list. And I was asked, I just did an interview with a national reporter in the last stop I made. She asked the question whether or not I thought that uh, what Trump, was, did you mean what he said when he said, basically, I'm not sure he's going to accept the results of the election. And I said, he won't. He won't. So what we really have to, you know, we can do a lot because I think the public is really ready to see some change. Yeah. And anyway, I'm talking too much. Like I said, my mother said, hush up, Joey. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
Yeah. Okay, I've, I've been in tired. Yeah. I've been in a much closer course. That wasn't too bad. Yeah. 